We are joined by GP Sarah Jarvis. Very good morning to you. Mm. Um, this is a report finding that almost three quarters of trusts had a bed occupancy of 95% on at least one day. And 95% is a critical number yeah. because? Because basically that's the stage at which the hospital A&E backs up to the stage where ambulances back up to the stage where people are dying at home. Because it sounds, I mean, 95% yeah. sounds like there is a little bit of capacity in the no, system. No, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because, of course, you've got to be getting people in and out and not all, you know, all female wards, all male wards. You may have at 95%, you're much more likely to have no beds at all on the male side that day or no beds at all on the female side. Another. Is it as apocalyptic as people are saying? Yeah, pretty much, I think it's really? fair to say. Well, we're looking at... Uh, it's, this is not just 15,000 beds cut in the last six years. We're looking at nearly 40% of beds cut in the last 15 years. Now, having said that, there are some positives in as much as I think we've got to accept that some hospitals will need to have beds cut because we need to make way for the super hospitals. And what I mean by super hospitals is, for instance, if you have a heart attack and you go to a little local cottage hospital, a little local district hospital, then your likelihood of surviving is is much lower than if you go to one of the super centres where they've got all the facilities mm. on site, you can have your scan within half an hour, you can be on the operating table within three hours, having the clot, having your arteries cleared. Fantastic. But A, what they're doing is not replacing all the beds in one place with another. And I think the real key from my perspective as a GP is that they're cutting the beds without putting the services in place in the community. Mm. And that means that when people come out, much, much earlier than they were, then there's no one to look after is, them. Is social care the real problem here? Is the lack of social care what is causing the real crisis? It's probably the single biggest factor, yes. What we've got is when people go in, in the past, when you went in with a heart attack, you'd be in for maybe 10 days. Today, you'll be in and out within a couple of days, which is great if you're relatively young and healthy. And, of course, people who had heart attacks used to be relatively young and healthy because we all died fairly young from heart attacks. These days, we're a product of our own success. We're living longer and longer. Every decade for the last 50 years, life expectancy has increased by two years. So, on average, we live 10 years longer than we did a generation ago. But the problem is people have other health concerns. So when people go in, they've got multiple health concerns. And when they get out, they're frail and they need social help. Mm. Well, in a statement, an NHS improvement spokeswoman said the NHS has been under real pressure this winter. It's working tirelessly to help manage and support more efficient use of the number of beds available. Dr Sarah Jarvis, thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning.